Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler. The title of this mechanisms video is Mitochondrial Melatonin, CERT-3 and SOD Activation, and H1F1 Alpha Down Regulation. Now this video is sponsored by Integrated Medicine Academy. Integrated Medicine Academy is an online academy for training courses for healthcare practitioners in various topics related to integrated medicine. That could be autism, hormones, toxicity issues, intestinal problems, organic acid testing, mitochondria, candida, etc. For a full list of our courses, please go to integratedmedicineacademy.com. You can also email us at integratedmedicineacademy at gmail.com. Here's our disclaimer for this video, understanding that this is for educational purposes only. And this information also comes from our mitochondria mastery course, which is a very in-depth course about mitochondria, its biochemistry, its structure, its role in the cell, mitochondria disorders, diseases, dysfunction, and testing and, and various clinical aspects of mitochondrial problems. So for more information, go to mitochondriamasterycourse.com. So let's get into the topic here. And this much of this information is going to come related to an article called Melatonin in Mitochondria Mitigating Clear and Present Dangers. Very interesting article. I encourage you to read it. So first off, glucose moves into the cell and gets converted to pyruvate through glycolysis, which occurs in the cytostolic fluid of the cell. Now, under the directions of lactate dehydrogenase, that pyruvate can get converted into lactate. And there are a number of things that augment that effect, one of them being H1F1-alpha, which is hypoxia-inducible factor 1-alpha. So various things trigger h one h one f or HIF1-alpha activity, one of them hypoxia, for example, growth factors, oncogenes. And this is called the Warburg effect. The Warburg effect is aerobic glycolysis, something that happens in cancer cells. And it's called aerobic glycolysis because we have glycolysis happening preferentially in the presence of oxygen, meaning that there are things that block the ability of moving pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A and basically downregulating mitochondrial activity. So the cell is preferentially driving its ATP through glycolysis as opposed to getting robust ATP production via the mitochondria. In a normal cell, we've got glucose that moves to pyruvate through glycolysis, and then that pyruvate moves into the mitochondria. And from there, it can be converted to acetyl coenzyme A under the actions of an enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase. Now, pyruvate, or what's called PDC, this is actually pyruvate dehydrogenase complex because it's actually a complex protein, not just a single protein. Or I should say there's various proteins that make up the complex. Now, acetyl coenzyme A can enter the Krebs cycle, and then that sequences over to the electron transport chain. Acetyl coenzyme A is also used as a substrate to make melatonin within the mitochondria. About 95% of our melatonin in our body is actually produced in the cell. About 5% actually comes from the pineal gland. So again, lactate dehydrogenase is what converts pyruvate to lactate, and that's a preferential pathway via the Warburg effect. Melatonin plays a supportive role, or a very important role, I should say, throughout the cell. Notice that melatonin supports the various complexes of the electron transport chain because it's actually a very potent antioxidant. Melatonin also can enter the cell and have a regulating effect against many of these triggers here, or these different chemicals that actually downregulate the ability of converting pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A. So let's focus, for example, just on HIF1 alpha, hypoxia inducible factor 1 alpha. Hypoxia inducible factor 1 alpha, as I mentioned, 
will increase the activity of lactate dehydrogenase converting pyruvate to lactate. H1F alpha or HIF1 alpha, excuse me, also activates something called pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase. And pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase, when that increases, that puts the brakes on pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, which means that it decreases the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A. So essentially an increase here can cause an increase of pyruvate to get converted to lactate. Well, melatonin helps to inhibit activity or regulate activity or overactivity of pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase, as well as regulating the activity of these other uh, protein structures, these transcription factors here as well. So melatonin can help prevent against too much angiogenesis, metastasis. It can help to augment what's called apoptosis. That's important in a cancer cell because we want a cancer cell to essentially eradicate itself. And apoptosis is a mechanism that occurs within cells to commit suicide. So it has an important role on this hypoxy inducible factor 1 alpha. Now, there are a number of enzymes, right, a number of factors that happen in the cell for the production of melatonin. So one of them is this aryl alkylamine and acetyl transferase, this AANAT. And notice that once we move pyruvate into the mitochondria, it gets converted to acetyl coenzyme A through the actions of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And it becomes acetyl coenzyme A interacting with serotonin becomes N-acetyl serotonin. That N-acetyl serotonin then becomes melatonin. So again, 95% of our melatonin is actually produced in the mitochondria within the cells of our body. And then it goes off and acts as an antioxidant preserving function of the electron transport chain. Another role of melatonin, other than the fact that it helps in what's called redox homeostasis, meaning scavenging reactive oxygen species, which is a normal function of mitochondria, it actually improves the function of what's called SIRT3. And SIRT3 activates SOD, which is superoxide dismutase. That in itself helps with redox homeostasis. So basically what this is doing is it's helping to buffer against too much oxidative stress. So melatonin is a very potent antioxidant and it works through different mechanisms to keep reactive oxygen species in check to some degree within the mitochondria. Okay, very important. So CERT3, there are a number of different CERT. So sirtuins is what they're called. These are a family of signaling proteins involved in metabolic regulation. And the dependence of sirtuins is actually on NAD+. So basically NAD or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide is linked to B3. So you can make the case that CERT function is dependent in part on vitamin B3. And there's, again, a number of these different CERT proteins or sirtuin proteins. CERT3 is very important in this discussion with regards to mitochondria. Now, an interesting thing about the antioxidant chemistry of melatonin. So melatonin contains a benzene ring. It contains what's called a pyrrole, which is a, a five-pointed ring here with a, a mean group on it or a nitrogen group on it. And then the combination of the pyrrole and the benzene forms what's called an indole ring. And so that has unique chemical characteristics. Coming off the pyrrole structure, is an acetyl group, okay? And that acetyl group uh, also acts in very importantly in different chemical reactions. So again, melatonin acting as a triggering chemical in the mitochondria activates SIRT3. SIRT3 activates superoxide dismutase. Superoxide dismutase helps to regulate too much free radical or, or oxygen species reactivity. And then all of these things help in the function of the electron transport chain because we need proper function of the electron transport chain to make ATP.
Okay, it also helps in something called FOXO3A, and then it increases the Krebs cycle enzyme efficiency as well. So it improves apoptosis, okay, and it helps in differentiation properties within the cell, uh, including the mitochondria. So when we talk about apoptosis, that is beneficial for a cancer cell. We don't necessarily always want apoptosis in a normal functioning cell. So if we have a runaway mechanism of apoptosis in a normal cell, that can be detrimental as well. So the way to think of it is melatonin helps in just apoptosis regulation from a beneficial standpoint within the cell. So HIF1-alpha, hypoxia-inducible factor 1-alpha. So again, hypoxia-inducible factor 1-alpha can get generated because of reactive oxygen species, as well as hypoxia, growth factors, oncogenes, as I mentioned before. And it can downregulate apoptosis, it can increase metastasis, it can increase angiogenesis, it can increase cell proliferation. Now, not all of those are bad per se, except perhaps maybe metastasis, but that would be in the presence of cancer. These are normal chemicals in the body, so they have a normal function. It's just that too much in the wrong circumstance can be detrimental. So again, this hypoxia inducible factor one alpha can overactivate the pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase, which puts the brakes on pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, which is needed to convert pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A. So it increases the potential for lactic acid formation. Another interesting article comes from the uh, Science Direct, this is Medicine and Drug Discovery, and this was looking at melatonin inhibits COVID-19 induced cytokine storm by reversing aerobic glycolysis in immune cells. So a normal function of immune cells, some of them, has to do with this aerobic glycolysis. So a healthy macrophage, okay, for example, is going to take glucose, convert it to pyruvate, convert some of it to lactate, and then it will move that pyruvate into the mitochondria to become acetyl coenzyme A, which then gets sequenced over to the Krebs cycle and then used to make ATP in the electron transport chain, which is what's called oxidative phosphorylation. And we get some melatonin production as well to help as an antioxidant. But in a COVID infection type of scenario, we get an overactivation of these macrophages. We start to get pro-inflammatory cytokines, since this is where that cytokine storm comes from. And if we get way too much HIF-1-alpha, the hypoxia-inducible factor 1-alpha activated, well, that positively stimulates the pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase, which puts the brakes on pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, decreasing pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A production, decrease Krebs cycle activity, decrease oxidative phosphorylation, increase pyruvate to lactic acid formation. Okay, and so this is now moving the cell into an anaerobic glycolysis state, which because of lactic acidosis, that can drive the acidity or metabolic acidosis, which has its own problems metabolically. It puts a lot of stress on the body. So melatonin then, one of its roles would be to act against the HIF-1-alpha, okay, and improve efficiency of the Krebs cycle and efficiency of the electron transport chain to try to maintain proper levels of ATP and create a shift away from too much lactic acid formation. So a lot to think about, very interesting, but very important when you understand the mechanisms of these disorders and why certain supplements could be beneficial like melatonin, for example, and why this plays such an important role. One of the other things is just to understand is that melatonin it is in part produced by the pineal gland, for, for sure. It's definitely part of the sleep-wake cycle, but it plays a very, very important role at the mitochondrial level. So again, this information comes from our Mitochondria Mastery course. So for more information, 
you can go to mitochondriamasterycourse.com. And then if you need any information, you can always email us at Integrative Medicine Academy at gmail.com for more information about our courses. Also, we have an entire list of our courses at Integrative Medicine Academy com, which is our main website. Again, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler. Thank you.